Mickey Rourke move over. <laughs> I could be in the next nine and a half weeks. Only if they call it four and a half minutes. Major, and I mean major romantic role. They want you to do a screen test. Nice place you've got here. <laughs> oh, kiss me! Actors' life for me in half an hour. Now, before we witness the trials of our aspiring actor, we're going to follow the fortunes of Philip Schofield, setting off for a new series in Schofield's Europe. is warning citizens of the latest identified sex risk. Rooftop lovemaking claims the lives of nearly a dozen people every year and injures countless others as participants fall asleep afterwards, roll over and drop off the roofs into the streets of Istanbul below. official stock exchange of Turkey is the unofficial stock market. The amounts of money you play with are considerably less. It moves a lot faster, but the risks are far greater. We've had some sort of insider information. Fridges are moving, apparently. Beer's doing particularly good, but I'm going to invest in cement. OK. That's fine, 5,000 change. Thank you very much. Is this good? This is good? Good. Good? good. I'm going to be a millionaire? Millionaire. Millionaire. millionaire. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Tourists would know this as the Blue Mosque, but its correct name is Sultan Ahmet Jami. It's one of 1,948 mosques in Istanbul. And every day, five times a day, Muslims are called to prayer from high on the minarets by the Muazzin. Every other Islamic country has chosen Friday as its day of rest. Now, Turkey chooses to work. It's taken a more Western approach and has chosen Sunday as its day of rest. However, devout Muslims will still say that Friday afternoon prayers are the most important of the week. As a Muslim, Alp must ritually wash his hands, arms, elbows, head, feet and ankles three times with running water before every prayer. This is the first time cameras have ever been allowed to film prayers inside the Blue Mosque. The simplicity of Islam is reflected in the uncluttered surroundings. The men face Mecca, a niche in the eastern wall concentrates the prayers and the thoughts of the faithful like a lens. A small area at the back is reserved for the women. Alp is a student of tourism at the university near the Blue Mosque. He invited me that evening to join him at his local hammam for a Turkish bath. How often would you come here, someone like this? At least once a week, but in a city like Istanbul, in a dirty city, we have to come, you see, every day. Very dirty city. Now, how old is this place? 
It's nearly 450 years old. One of the oldest hammams or Turkish beds, so called. There's also a women's section as well, isn't there? Yes. Are men allowed in there? No, of course not. <laughs> Because there are entrances on different streets. Yes. What would happen if you went in the wrong door? Today or in old days? Both times. Today, if a man does it deliberately, he would be beaten up. In old days, only one and execution. That's a very high price to pay for a naked body, isn't it? <laughs> the other side of getting clean is the hammam. This is uh, Ibrahim here. Who's uh, doing the business? <laughs> Let's twist again. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Are there people that go through this treatment and, and don't flinch? They just sort of lie here and don't make a, make a sound. You should not sit here. Sunnit means circumcision, and Saraya means palace. This is the only circumcision palace in the world. Kemal Ozkan is the circumcision guru of Turkey and has circumcised over 68,000 boys in an atmosphere of celebration and fun. His slogan is circumcision Saturday, school on Monday. There's a circumcision season in Turkey. The boys are dressed in uniforms that reflect the aspirations their parents have for them in later life. To be circumcised by Kemal is considered an honor, and Turkish political parties vie for his support in winning votes in elections. Circumcision is deeply rooted in Turkish tradition. Many boys are circumcised in hospital under a general anaesthetic. But Kemal has created this family celebration because when a Turkish boy is circumcised, he instantly becomes a man. <laughs> Kemal gives the boys a local anaesthetic and circumcises them using a laser. The priest chants a prayer, and the clowns, who were originally employed to cover the screams of the children, are now there as a colorful distraction. Of course, it doesn't always work. for one small boy in 1973 was performed in far less salubrious surroundings. When I was sitting on my bed, Barish came in and said to me, Ferida, I saw something huge. It's like a bird. I, can't, I don't know what it is. Can you walk out with me to the courtyard? Covering that you can be very happy with small things, I think, by his help. Why was he in there? Because of his mother. His mother was there because of a drug problem. But there was no one to take care of him outside, and he had to be with his mother. Faraday was imprisoned under Article 141, a flexible law brought against political activists. That article has recently been annulled. She was imprisoned, she says, for the crime of thinking aloud. How severe were your uh, loud thoughts? Uh, that depends on uh, what you call severe in a thought. I call nothing severe as long as it's a thought. <laughs> I was in a military prison for two years. 
we tried to make the best of life even there, even though uh, it was a matter of life and death there, you know, as clear as that. But after that, in civil prison, it was different. People asked me a lot of questions in Europe about what the prison looked like there. They said, uh, you're mis uh, misinforming people. The prisons in Turkey were not like this. It was uh, almost uh, pleasant the way you presented it there. So, uh, but it was very realistic, really. The civil prison was like that. It must have been very hard for you to leave him. Yes, very much so. <laughs> That was why I could not say goodbye to him. That's very realistically in film. And I, I really escaped. Did you ever keep in touch? I went once to visit him. And uh, it was a very difficult experience for most of us. Indy. I decided not to go again so that I, he would forget me because he was still very young, you know, going every 15 days, every two weeks. and. Uh, keeping that memory alive did not seem very logical to me. Maybe it's better for both of us to keep each other in memories. Istanbul is where Europe runs out. Only 3% of Turkey is in Europe, this little bit here. There's the city of Istanbul. The rest of the country, there's a massive amount of it, is in Asia. And this is what it looks like on the ground. Over there is Europe, and over there, is Asia. Now, of course, we're not supposed to go to that part of the city because this is Schofield's Europe, but rules are made to be broken. Turkey's most successful entertainer, Barish Mancho, lives across the Bosphorus on the Asian side of Istanbul. Rock star for 30 years and now television celebrity, Barish has a weekly audience of over 35 million. I was warned that uh, if you want to find Barish, all you've got to do is look for the crowd. If I could just, uh... Barish! Hello. Yes. Hello. Come on. Nice to meet you. You've got to hope someone recognises you so they'll let you in. Yeah, like a yeah, there you go. Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. From 7 to 77 is the name of Barish's weekly television show and the age range he appeals to. In the bland world of Turkish television, his show stands out on its own. It was only when travelling around the world for his show that he realised the young Turkish Republic has an identity crisis. We don't know if we are in West or, or in East. Some people claim that we are in East when it's a question of uh, European World Cup or Eurovision Song Contest, that, you know, on two occasions, we are from West, from, I mean, from Europe, I mean. But for me to come in your country, I need a visa. I think Turkey is still a so-called European country for some other countries. You know, we're, for the Easterns, we are West. So for the Western, we are East. You know, we're just, uh, like Bridge on the Bosphorus, I mean, we are on Bosphorus, just both sides. Now, we are in, in, in East now, you know. Well, I am mean, in the Asia side of Turkey. Now you're in Asia. There's no more scope in Europe. So I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't, shouldn't be, be here. No, I say You're in Asia, no? <laughs> we divide countries as being friends of Turks and uh, non-friends of Turks, because we think ourselves uh, being the center of the world. And, and what is Britain? <laughs> Non-friend. No. Well, I mean, it's, it's from the, uh, since the far back in the history. And the world, big war, Lawrence of Arabia. Huh? Huh? Barish is unbelievably popular, and by constantly campaigning through the show, he has a great influence on modern Turkish society. I wondered about any future political ambition. You want honestly? Yeah. Can I, can I tell you? Yeah. Off the record that they are, they are filming? Okay. Okay, I'll do this, okay. <laughs> uh, we'll have our eighth. President now. Yeah. I prepare myself for the ten. You'll be the ten. Yeah. I prepare my. I, I'm not saying I'll be. Yeah. I'll prepare myself to be the ten president of the Young Turkish Republic by the year 2002. What changes do you see in Istanbul? Well, this is good and bad side. Well, this is bad side. You know, we are still constructing. Istanbul is is is a big, big construct. Un under construction city. This is bad because finally we have pollution with this. We have dust. 
It sounds very dusty because of the constructions. So make room for ever coming people. Yeah. So they expect we Istanbul by the year 2000 to be about around 15 million. Turkey is surrounded by six other countries, and that means that it's affected by and sensitive to changes in their political and economic climate. The influx of refugees is well documented. But Istanbul also faces a lot of pressure from an increase in population from within the country's own boundary. Over the last 20 years, the Gecikondu shanty suburbs of Istanbul have evolved piecemeal. They're illegal, some are pulled down by the authorities, but many remain. The people living here are mostly from the Black Sea and Kurds from the southeast. Many people we approach refuse to speak to us for fear of drawing attention to themselves. But Gul Firat and her husband Tekin had no such doubts. Şehir hayatına benzemiyor ama köy hayatı da değil. Köyle şehir arası, köy kent arası bir yaşam. Devletin birazcık olsun ilgilen ilgisizliğinin de etken olduğu bir ortam. E, su elektrik bağlı. Ancak elektriklerimiz sık sık bildirim yapılmadan kesiliyor. Sularımız gene bildirim yapılmadan bazen günlerce akmıyor. Geçen yıl 8 ay hiç su akmadı. Gul is Turkish, but Tekin, her husband, is a Kurd. This seemingly innocuous painting could lead Tekin into conflict with the authorities, simply because he's painted the Kurdish flag. To exercise your Kurdishness within the Turkish Republic is to invite trouble. Şimdi tabii bizim için biraz daha zor. Yani Türkiye Cumhuriyeti sınırları içinde hem Kürt olmak hem yoksul olmak e, eziyeti iki katına çıkarıyor. Türkiye Cumhuriyeti kendi ulusumun yarattığı, kendi e, insanımın yarattığı bütün kültür değerlerine Türk kültürüdür biçimiyle sahip çıkmış. Tekin has yet to find a Turkish gallery willing to risk showing his Kurdish work. Gul and Tekin are politically active on many fronts, raising the profile of human rights abuses in Turkey. Even by talking to us, they've taken a great risk. Daha üç ay önce bir hipli bir arkadaşımız evinde tek başına kadın kafasına dayamışlar silah öldürmüşler orada. İşte ne yazık ki Türkiye halkı tepki vermiyor, tepki göstermiyor. Bunların üzüntüsünü halen yaşıyoruz. Şimdi artık işkencehanelere çekmiyorlar. E, dördün, dördüncü kattan atıyorlar aşağıya. İntihar etti oluyor. Bütün insanlarımız intihar etmek için emniyetin binalarını seçiyor artık. But don't you worry about accidentally falling from the fourth floor of the police station? Şimdi bu durum bizi hiç yani üzmüyor. Gerçekten ben hiç üzmüyor. Çok komik. Demek ki o kadar aciz kaldılar artık. Arkamıza atılacak milyonlarca insan, insan var. 58 milyon da atamazlar ya. The Grand Bazaar in Istanbul is probably the world's first shopping mall because it was started in the mid-1400s. It's certainly the world's largest cover bazaar uh, because there are over 4,000 shops here. It has its own mosque and its own police force and its own school. And there's one set rule, there are no fixed prices, you have to haggle. For four generations, the Dosha family have been in the bazaar. Whilst working with his dad here in 1958, Onda was spotted by a talent scout at a time when the Turkish film industry was booming. Kımıldama paşa. Bunu kendin istedin. Bana karşı mı geliyorsun? Bana silah mı çekiyorsun? Evet paşa. <gülüyor> Three hundred films later, he returned to the family business, swearing never to appear on camera again. We twisted his arm. Böyle kapalı çarşıda, daha doğrusu Türkiye'ye gelirken hazırlıklıdır. Ee, Türkiye'de çok pazarlık yapılır, çok fala istenilir. Dolayısıyla pazarlık yapın, aman diye de tembihlenilir. Ee, bu tembihi biz de çok yakından bildiğimiz için, özellikle İtalyan, İspanyol, e, Yunanlı gibi e, yabancı turistler çok pazarlık ederler. Are women better than men at haggling? <laughs> um, what's your minimum offer on this? Minimum 
Yeah, you see, I haven't got that much money on them. Ben size en son 65000 liraya bırakayım. I'll give you 50000 or otherwise I have to go. I'll have to go and 50? Bey. Okay. So how much should I have paid for that? So halbuki ısrar etse de 30 bin liraya verecektim. When Agatha Christie mysteriously disappeared near London in 1926, many thought the writer was dead. Eleven days later, she reappeared and refused point blank to tell anyone where she'd been. In the 1970s, Warner Brothers decided to make a film about those missing 11 days. They asked American psychic Tamara Rand to contact the spirit of Agatha Christie. In a trance, Rand saw Christie walking along an ancient paved street called Mesrutiat Jedesi, and through the portals of a hotel called Pera Palace. They traced the hotel to Istanbul and discovered that in room 411, Christie had written Murder on the Orient Express. In March 1979, hotel management and Warner Brothers representatives met here in room 411. Via a telephone link to America and Tamara Rand, Agatha Christie's spirit led them all here. Underneath the floorboards, and just behind the skirting board, they found this. Experts have confirmed that this key is over 70 years old. Christie told Rand that the key would open a box containing her secret diary of those missing 11 days. Rand said she'd have to hold the key to locate the box, but the hotel manager refused to send it to America, demanding millions of dollars for the story. Rand never came to the hotel, and the seance was never held. The key is kept in a bank vault in Istanbul, and Christie's spirit still holds the secret of those missing 11 days. There's an old Turkish saying, better beat your daughters when young, or you'll beat yourself later with regret. Two thirds of Turkish women have been beaten by men in their family. In 1987, a pregnant woman took her husband to court because he was beating her. The judge ruled in his favor, quoting another Turkish proverb, never leave a woman's womb unheeded, nor her back unattended by a stick. It was this ruling that prompted a group of Istanbul women to set up the Purple Roof, a focal point for the fledgling women's movement. In 1987, figure, it says that uh, two-thirds of women are beaten up but uh, most of them, uh, they don't reach us. Men do not need reasons to beat up a woman. Uh, so let's say, this meal is salty. This is cold, this is hot, this is unsalty. Why did you wait till now uh, for me? Why did you go to bed and why didn't you wait for me? Or uh, you cannot go out of the house, or I am just furious. I mean, they don't need any reason. İşte eskiden böyle değildi. Şu dört senedir falan böyle oldu. E, dayak, e, söz hakkı yok. E, ne bileyim yani evin içinde hiçbir huzur yok. E, bana olmadığı gibi çocuklara da yok. E, i̇nsan yani sabrediyor ediyor bir yere kadar bir yerde dur diyor. Tamam burada senin işin bitti. Dayağı yiyen benim, hakareti yiyen benim. Yani ne diye onun beynine giriyorsun. Whatever is going on in the house, it is private and it should be kept in the house. And this is a great uh, virtue for a woman. That's why this is the idea uh, they are trying to inject to women. E, o evde yaşadığımız zaman bir insan olduğumuzu unutmuştuk artık. Çünkü karşımızdakinden böyle bir e, yaklaşım veya böyle bir hareket görmüyorduk. Biz e, Dışarıda ne olduğundan da pek haberimiz yoktu. Evde kapalı olduğumuz için biz şimdi değişik bir çevreye girip de böyle bir konuşma, böyle bir ne bileyim anlayış, böyle bir insanlık görünce biz ben hayret ettim yani. Is there higher governmental support for what you're doing? No. No, we haven't had any support at all. We are trying to go on with ourselves. We are trying to manage on ourselves. 
The Purple Roof is the only independent women's centre in Turkey, providing counselling and advice. But most of the women who contact them need to be given refuge and hidden from their husbands. But as yet, they can't afford a shelter. The slogan of the women's movement in Turkey is scream so that everyone hears you. Only if they do will the walls of silence that surround these women be torn down. The uh, Galata Bridge is famous for two reasons. It's uh, loud and vocal restaurateurs who will just leap out and grab you at the drop of a hat as you walk by, and also a card game. Now, the story has it that during the Crimean War, the soldiers would walk across the... Hello there. Hang on, it's just a second. Do you have a fish fish? Oh, hang on a moment. The soldiers would walk across the bridge to, uh, to play a game of cards on the other side. It was a type of whist, and, um, and that's how it got its name, bridge. Is this a good restaurant? Yes, nice restaurant. We have a fresh fish. One. There's something vaguely depressing about coming out for a drink with your mates, having a bit of a smoke, having a good time, and then some geezer comes along and takes your blood pressure and tells you it's killing you. What? 11 8. Is that good or bad? Normal. It's actually been an unbelievable day because I just looked at the newspapers and found out that my cement shares have gone down as well. Have you? Yes. I lost 4,000 lira. But finish? Finish? Yeah. Finish. Thank you very much indeed. That's 60p down the tubes on cement shares. Take it from me. Leave your money in your pocket. Thank you very much. Thank you. Spectacular. Great. Is that my finger or yours? <laughs> Europe. Europe. Europe. Europe. Europe. Europe. Europe. Europe. Europe. This new series continues at the same time next Thursday when Philip moves on to Amsterdam. Europe. Europe.